In Lesson 2.1, students continue looking at the properties of different substances, and in this case, they're looking at the properties of liquids. The question is whether liquids that look very, very similar, water, mineral oil, and corn syrup, have different properties. Students will do simple tests to see that even though water, mineral oil, and corn syrup look the same, they have different properties that depend on the molecules which they're made from. So you'll give students a zip closing plastic bag with a labeled piece of cardstock inside, water, oil, and syrup. And the first thing the students do will be to place just a few drops of each liquid on the plastic bag to see how it behaves. And they'll see that water beads up and that oil kind of is much flatter. That even though they're clear, colorless liquids, they act differently as they come out of the dropper and as they sit on the plastic bag. So then students will tilt the plastic bag and do a test to see how fast and in what way the liquids move down the bag. So water goes really fast and doesn't leave a trail behind. Oil moves more slowly and leaves a trail of oil and syrup barely moves at all. So even though the liquids look very similar, they have very different properties. You can show students an animation that helps them understand that it's the molecules of each liquid that determines their properties. So here, the liquids are placed on the plastic. We try to reflect what happens in real life, that the water is more beaded up, that the mineral oil is flatter, and that the corn syrup is flat also. Now, if we take a look, we have the water is made up of water molecules that will be depicted as tiny little blue circles. The mineral oil is a long hydrocarbon, just carbons and hydrogens, and will be depicted as like a snaky kind of string. The corn syrup is made up mostly of glucose, which is a sugar, and that's shown as a hexagon. So if we look at each one, you can kind of explain why it is that they act differently. If you look at the water molecules, they're small blue dots and they flow easily over one another and they're not attracted to the plastic. If you look at the oil molecules, they're long and curvy and could get tangled up in each other and are slow to move past one another. If you look at the glucose molecules, they're hexagons, and they're large complex molecules and they can get caught up on one another, and they also tend to adhere a bit to the plastic. So that can help students understand a bit of why the different liquids act the way they do. In the extend part of the lesson, you can do a demonstration where you take a sample of water, mineral oil, and corn syrup, the same liquids that students have been using, and you place one drop of food coloring in each one. Students can clearly see that the way the food coloring interacts with each liquid is different. And since the food coloring is the same in each case, it must be that the liquids are different. That the food coloring mixes in easily with the water, it just drops to the bottom and doesn't spread out at all in the oil. And on the corn syrup, it spreads out on the surface. So they're very different because of the characteristics of each liquid. For NGSS standard 2 PS11, plan and conduct an investigation to describe and classify different kinds of materials by their observable properties. In lesson 2.1, students do a test on plastic where they look at each liquid, how it looks on the plastic, and how it acts when the plastic is tilted, and they see that each liquid has its own characteristic properties. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students conduct a basic test using the liquids on plastic, to observe their similarities and differences, and they also observed you doing a demonstration at the end with food coloring in each of the three liquids and see that each liquid is different. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, that matter can be described and classified by its observable properties, here students see that matter, in this case each different liquid, can be described by their observable properties, how they look on the plastic and how they run down the plastic, and how they interact with the food coloring. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, that events have causes that generate observable patterns and that simple tests can be designed to gather evidence, 
Well, in this lesson, students see that the different liquids have different properties because of the different molecules they're made from. Well, thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.